there guys and welcome back. You know, this week on the show I had a video planned out and um, I had a question online regarding the spline jig for my photo frames and I really appreciate you guys watching these videos and I appreciate your subscriptions so instead of doing the video that I had planned for this week I'm going to switch it up and in answer to the question that I received online I'm going to show you guys how to make a photo frame spline jig for your table saw. Okay, so for those of you that don't know what splines are, they are these little things right here which are used to strengthen uh, certain types of joints. In this particular case, they're used to strengthen the miter joint of a picture frame. And there's a jig that we use to cut these with a table saw and it looks just like this. So we're going to go through the steps uh, on how to do that and what we need to do first is we need to measure and get the width of our table saw ripping fence. The reason I want to measure the width and the height of my ripping fence is that contrary to the jig that I used in my picture frame tutorial videos I'd like to have this one mount right over the top of this ripping fence. I think it'll give it a little more stability and make it a little uh, a little safer in that it'll give it less chance for the jig to tilt causing it to bind against the saw blade. So just in measuring this this fence is two inches wide and we've got two and thirteen sixteenths high and uh, those are the measurements for my particular fence that I'm going to start with and uh, we're going to go from there. So this is my original spline jig and it leaves a lot to be desired really. Um, it was a makeshift jig that I made just to kind of use at the time and uh, it was more of an experiment than anything but now that I know that it does a great job I'd like to modify this. So. I found that I like this particular dimension so we're going to start off with a 10 by 10 square of material and for this entire jig uh, I'm going to be using 3 quarter inch plywood so we're going to start off with a 10 inch by 10 inch square of 3 quarter plywood. Okay there guys, in that last segment you may have noticed that I used my miter gauge to trim off about an inch of the existing board that I was using. I didn't do that because the board was bad, I did that to ensure that the board is square. Whenever you're making a jig of any kind, spline jig, you know, table saw, sled, whatever you're making, ensuring that your parts are square is imperative. Making sure that every corner is square is imperative because every wrong angle or every imperfect square in your jig is going to translate to the cuts of your project and that's the last thing you want. So in this particular case, checking all four corners, we've got a perfectly square piece of 3 quarter inch plywood, 10 inches by 10 inches. So the next step now is to mark the center line on your board and 10 inch wide board so center obviously is a 5 inch mark right down the middle and uh, I showcased these Incra T rules last week on the show and uh, I use them all the time but you just hold your pencil in the 5 inch mark and we're going to run it down and there is our line at the center for 5 inches. The next thing you want to do is take a combination square or a trusted square that you know has a good 45 degree on it and we just want to line up with that center line and we want to draw 145 mark right there coming out from the center line this way and then another 45 line 
on the left side matching up with our center line. <clears throat> These lines here will be the lines that will help us align the jig a little later on when we're actually putting our frame supports onto the jig. But for now, we've got that done. Now we're going to move over to the table saw and we're going to cut our supports that will allow us to brace this upright onto our ripping fence. We know that our fence is two inches wide. We measured that earlier. So we're going to take some of this three-quarter stock and we are going to rip a piece of three-quarter stock two inches wide and then we're going to cross cut it and cut it to a length of 10 inches which is the same width as our jig. I have here another board of three-quarter plywood. It measures just shy, it looks like uh, seven and seven eighths, so just shy of eight inches wide. This is actually the off cut from where I cut the two inch strip that will ride over top of my fence here. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to change this jig up a little bit and get a little swanky with it. I'm going to cut this here, square off this edge. Again, square is very important when building a jig and I'm going to cut a square of this 8 inch wide board to 10 inches which will be the same length here as our jig and then I'm going to show you how we're going to get a little different with this jig. Alright, so what we want to do is we want to place our 10 by 10 board on the cutting side or the left side of the fence. This is our two inch wide strip that will be for the top of the jig. And you can see how I've just placed that there. And this is our 10 inch by 8 inch piece that we've just cut. Now this looks a little strange right now and grantedly so, but what we want to do is fold this piece away and take a sharp pencil and you just want to mark the inside on the top edge of this two inch board. Now that you've got that done, this is where we're going to get funky. A while back on the show we made some push pads and I made this template for the handle of the push pads and I thought it might be a half decent idea to give me something to grip this with. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this template and I'm going to use my pencil here and trace around it so that we can get ourselves a handle on this 8 inch piece of board. So I'm just going to trace around here and then once I get this traced out, we're going to take this over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut it out. Now don't forget though, when you get down to this area here with these straight lines, you want to cut along with those straight lines because of course those are the lines that will butt up to um, the two inch piece for the top of your fence. I've got a number seven blade installed in the scroll saw and we're just going to go ahead and cut out the shape of our handle. My handle cut and I've got my pieces placed over top of my ripping fence and now I've kind of just dry clamped it and the only reason I've done that is just to do a test run to see how well that's gonna slide along my fence for me and as you can see that actually slides pretty good there's some 
tension there, which is good. That's what we want. We don't want this thing freewheeling and bouncing back and forth. So I like the way that fits. So we're going to carry on. I think one thing I'd like to do here is measure from here, the outside edge, into the edge of this board. And I'd like to put some 45 braces on here just to ensure that we can keep this upright nice and square to the table. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to measure from here, cut some 45s, and we're going to glue those into place. Then we're going to start assembling this jig. We have our upright 10 by 10 board here. And this is our 2 inch by 10 inch top piece that goes on top of our fence. We just want to roughly make a little mark on our board about the center of this top brace. And at that measurement on this board and the backer board, we're going to put a horizontal mark across. And what that's going to be for is we're going to drill and countersink some pilot holes in order to screw this jig together. Well, that little mark that we've made is at three and one eighth. So we're going to take our INCRA T rule here and we're going to mark a mark on the front face of this larger board and on the outside face of this handle board at three and one eighth. And as I said, these are for mounting our screws and being able to uh, screw this jig together. So I'm going to come in at two and a quarter inches in on each of these. All right, so we're going to mark that one and we're going to mark this one on here at two and one quarter. And the same with this one here at two and one quarter. All right. Now what we're going to do actually is now we're going to drill and countersink these holes for a pilot hole for our assembly screws. Okay, we're going to start off with the assembly of the main body of our jig. And first thing we're going to I'm going to tell you guys is that we're going to use our fence as our assembly guide. So do yourself a favor. We're using glue. Get a piece of wax paper down on your fence. And once you get that in place, lay your top board on, on the fence there. Now, we've given all our pieces a light sanding and we've got our two holes drilled and countersunk. We've got four number eight by inch and a half wood screws here. And what we're going to do is we're going to place our main 10 by 10 board up against the fence. Now at this point in time, we'll get a couple clamps ready. And what we're going to do is we're going to place a bead of glue on both sides of our 2 inch by 10 inch board. We're also going to get our backer board ready so that as soon as we get the glue on there, we can sandwich this thing together and get a couple clamps on it. So I'm just using regular wood glue. This is tight, regular tight bond. And again, just a little bead of it down the back end of your jig. Just like that. And then another bead on the other side of this board. This glue is not cooperating with me and I'm trying to work quickly so I don't drip on my table saw. And then sit that there and sandwich this whole thing together. Just like that. Once you get the pieces lined up, get a clamp on it. And just get a clamp on both sides. This is the point in time now that you want to drill for your pilot holes for your number eight screws. And we're going to go ahead and do this. I've got this all set up ready to go with a 1 8 inch bit. Just going to get a little pilot hole in there. 
and another one in through this side. Same on this side here. And same on this side. From there guys, you just want to... I had everything prepared except for a screwdriver. <laughs> From there, just install your screws to give this thing the extra strength it needs. The reason for the pilot holes is so that we're not going to split our jig apart as we're putting the screws in. It is plywood and if you start messing around and just going ahead and screwing screws in there without a pilot hole, you're going to split it. And we really don't want to do that at this point. So now that we've got our jig screwed and glued together, we want to put our triangular upright braces that we cut. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue them in place, but we're going to screw and countersink up from the bottom up into this piece and in through this way to keep this upright nice and square. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and install these, these braces and then we're going to get into the final step of making this picture frame spline jig. We can see here now that we've got our triangular braces on here and it sits really nicely on the fence. If you want to check it, you can check it. This thing is perfectly square to the table and that's what you want. So now we're going to move on to the next step, which is the cradle that goes on the front end, which will be uh, the cradle that supports our picture frames. So this is the front face of our jig. And here are our original setup lines that we drew on there in our first step. So not the 45 that lines up with the center mark, but this top one, you want to take a trusted square and transfer that line to the outside edge of the board. Then you want to take another piece of plywood, lay it on top of your jig, and line up your corners. Line up your bottom edge and this corner, so line up your outside edges. And once you get that lined up, again, that line that you just transferred, transfer that line to the new board. Now what you want to do is take this new board to the saw and cut a 45 piece out of it so that we can take that 45 piece and secure it to our jig in this particular corner. You're going to cut two and one will go here and one will go here. Okay, so we've cut our jig pieces and you can see I've got one corner here and that corner will get mounted thusly on the jig and this corner will get mounted right here. Now effectively the 45 and the 45 will give you a 90 degree angle here that your frame can comfortably sit in as it's being cut. Now, depending on how deep of a spline you want to do, you want to be careful at this point in time mounting these. These do get chewed up over time and on my other jig I glued them in. I'm not going to glue these in. These ones are going to be screwed in However, you don't want to bring the screws down into the level of the blade. So I'm going to go up, you know, an inch and a half, two inches, maybe put a couple screws up here out of harm's way of the blade. Uh, there has been times uh, with my other jig where I've had to remove the bottom screw that holds in the braces for the frame. So before you cut, guys, just check the level of the blade to ensure that you're not going to be dinging screws and wrecking your blade. So I'm going to drill and countersink these and screw in the supports for our frame. 
When assembling your jig, it's important to get these 45s correct. So don't be afraid to use the things you have on hand, such as your combination square, to line up this piece so that you know that it is exactly 45 to the base of your jig. So I'm going to use the combination square on both sides to line these up to make sure that they are perfect and that this angle for the cradle for the frame is exactly at 90 degrees. Well we've got our cradle mounted and uh, using our combination square to help line it up and we'll just check this here for the 90 degree mark and this one here is right on the money. So this is our jig and let's just run through quickly how it is that you're going to go about using this jig. Alright, so in order to use this jig, you first off want to set the height of your blade. You do that by taking your frame, sitting it in the cradle of your jig, sliding it just in front of your blade, and then cranking your blade up or down until you get the desired height for your splines. At this point in time it's a good idea to check to make sure that it's not going to come in contact with any of these mounting screws. And like I said I made these removable so that when they get chewed up I can still keep this swanky little handle thing that I've made and just replace those front cradle sections. So once you get that done you then want to sit your jig over top of your fence. Slide your fence in so that the blade lines up with the center of your frame and lock it down. Now that yet you've got your blade height set and your fence locked down, you want to place your frame in the cradle and clamp it in place. Guys, please, 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 when using this jig, do not try to use your hands to hold this in here. Too much instability going back and forth, and it's a great way to bind up and end up hurting yourself. So please clamp it in place. Whether you're using these spring clamps or whether you're using some quick grips, clamp this baby in place. Now I've lowered the blade just so that I can demonstrate. I'm not going to cut a, a finished frame, obviously. But when you get everything clamped and you've double checked to make sure that your blade is in the center of your frame and you're happy with it, fire up the saw and push this jig right through until it clears the blade. Once you're clear of the blade, shut the saw down and of course you can then unclamp your frame, rotate it to do the next cut and clamp it in place. Once you get it clamped in place guys, repeat the process. This is a fantastic little jig. It works really well for cutting splines. And you know what, I'm really happy I kind of funkified this one with the handle. I think it's a great, uh, a great addition to an already fantastic jig that I had in my shop. Just awesome. And there you have it. Uh, just a great jig guys, easy to make, easy to use, uh, this is the new and improved version obviously from my original, um, so I hope this helps you guys out, I hope you guys make one of your own of these spline jigs for your picture frames, and uh, give it a try, it's a great jig, and it does a fantastic job. I'd like to say thanks to Pat for sending in that note on the spline jig and asking about it. Uh, I do appreciate your subscriptions to my YouTube channel and uh, it's the least I could do is give a little back and answer your questions with a video response. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week with another woodworking video.